I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about uh, five investment myths related to, to climate change, myths in order of increasing absurdity. Um, myth number one is that, that the science is still too uncertain to act. We're producing as a planet about 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide a year, absorbing about 15 billion tons, so net 15 billion tons of uh, increasing CO2 concentration, around 500 billion tons emitted historically to date. And science suggests that at about 1,000 billion tons of cumulative emissions, then uh, we're on for two degrees warmer uh, world than we see today. So the greenhouse effect is well established. The planet is warming. Whether the atmosphere is warming as fast as the oceans is a current topic in the science. The science, however, is not completely set. So there's worry about tipping points. There's a lack of understanding about the effect of clouds, of water vapor. And um, there's also uh, uncertainty about feedback. However, we as investors are trained, uh, experienced in making decisions under uncertainty. So the science shouldn't get in the way. Myth number two is that investors can afford to wait. Uh, this is a response that um, we at Impacts here time and again from institutional investors who are not represented in this room around the world. Climate change somehow is a long-term issue that um, they don't need to worry about today, particularly given the effect of discount rates on valuation models. However, these effects are already here. If you had exposure to, uh, to German utilities recently, you would have seen a huge drop in the value in power utilities linked to the effect on marginal pricing of renewables, as well as the impact of the pullback from nuclear power, which of course in the climate change context is, is uh, somewhat odd thinking, although of course uh, the German government does have a very dramatic vision. Um, you'd have also been exposed um, to significant loss if you'd been investors directly or indirectly in coal-fired power generation in Australia, where three gigawatts of coal plant has been shut down in the last 12 months since the uh, introduction of the carbon tax. So these effects are already upon us. If you'd um, been part of the oil refining industry or as a portfolio manager in the US, then Katrina would have uh, damaged you. Hurricane Sandy, of course, caused $65 billion worth of damage, only half of which was insured. Were those two events linked to climate change? Well, those are uh, contentious questions, but um, again, if you're making decisions under uncertainty, you probably want to, uh, to take them into account. In the near future, of course, we've got uh, the effects of um, the uh, CO2 being adopted by the Environmental Protection Agency in the US as a, a key pollution um, uh, target, of what impact that will have on portfolios. So investors can't afford to wait. Myth number three, climate change will only affect a small part of my portfolio. Well, clearly, climate change policy directly affects energy and also utilities, as does weather risk. However, what about industrials that are exposed to the benefits and disbenefits of a big push towards energy efficiency around the world? What about healthcare as new drugs and uh, health programs are affected, some positive, some negative, by... Uh, changing disease patterns and changing policy. What about timber? There's a big push at the moment worldwide for more investment in forests, but will those forests be here in, in as productive a state in the next 20, 30 years, which is a time frame that many institutions are hoping to hold those assets for? So climate change needs to be seen through the lens of policy risk, of weather risk, and also of reputational risk. This is a portfolio-wide issue. You can't afford to pigeonhole it. The fourth myth is climate change is all about risk. Um, clearly, in a world in which policy is changing, then markets will be affected, there will be dislocations, there will be new technologies and new business models arising. Therefore, it shouldn't come as a surprise that there's a plethora of opportunities out there to make money, whether you think that making money from climate change is ethically responsible or not. Um, FTSE and Impacts have identified over 1,000 listed companies that have a majority of their business linked to climate change and resource scarcity directly or indirectly. Those businesses, generally speaking, are growing more rapidly than the mainstream economy and tend to be prone to mispricing because of the policy change, technology change, and the features of young markets that mean 
uh, there's a lot of dynamism and the scope for active investment management to make money. Impacts um, next week will be producing research following on from the carbon tracker report. We've uh, been able to demonstrate that if you'd taken out fossil fuels from your generic global equity portfolios over the last seven years, you would have not affected your return or your risk as measured mathematically. And if you'd replaced that fossil fuel um, tranche with a portfolio of energy efficiency stocks, you'd have actually enhanced your returns. So divestment from fossil fuels, which is a very topical theme at the moment, which we'll no doubt hear more about in the next uh, couple of days, doesn't necessarily need to impact your risk-adjusted returns. Markets to focus on, of course, light-emitting diodes, desalination, the rollout of the cold chain around the world, and uh, the move towards new and smarter power grids, just a few examples. And finally, and this is probably the most uh, intriguing of all, we quite often hear the response from asset owners that uh, my investment managers can take, clear, take, take care of climate change for me. For those of us um, that learned about investment management at school, then of course uh, we will be aware that asset allocation is the principal driver of investment returns. That investment managers who are working within narrow mandates generally have limited, and in some cases zero, incentive to take care of downside, fat tail, or black swan risk. At the same time, asset owners, as has been mentioned by Rachel, need to be worried about stranded assets, need to consider the impact of their investments in fossil fuels and other sectors. That policy change could suddenly lead uh, to a significant drop, precipitous drop in the value of those assets. On the other side of the coin, the opportunity to hedge climate change risk by investing in a portfolio of opportunities linked to climate change ought to be a logical uh, issue for debate anyway at the trustee level as well as at the um, decision level within the asset community. And finally, policymakers are not working in a vacuum. We found as part of several discussion groups in Europe and the US that policymakers are desperate to engage with the institutional community to find new ways of bringing in capital into the infrastructure market and are open to the idea of setting firm binding targets if institutional investors can give them comfort that they will be open to putting capital behind new asset creation. So uh, climate change is not something to delegate. You have to take responsibility for it. So those are my five myths.